Hi, I'm Kendra from Redgate. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I have configured Git to work with VS Code. Now, the first thing to do if you're just getting started is to install Git. There's a couple ways to do this. You can go to the git-scm.com website, download Git, run an installer from there. That works great. Or if you prefer to install it with a package manager, you can do that. So on Windows, I like the chocolatey package manager. I can open a terminal with administrative permission in Windows and then use these commands to install or upgrade Git. This is nice and easy to repeat. If I'm already uh, fond of using a package manager, that can be really, really handy. Now, there's some preferences in Git that are useful to configure globally. Like you may wanna tell it, hey, what's the default for my email? What's the default for my username? So you will modify these commands. You will change this to be your email address. You will change this to be the name you prefer to use. And if you run these from a terminal, it could be in VS Code, it could be out of VS Code. You can set those default values if you do have defaults you wanna use for that. I also like to run this command to set VS Code as the default git commit and diff tool. So I'll go ahead, let's run this one as an example. I'll open my terminal in VS Code with control uh, back tilde. You also, if you uh, want to do it from the menu on the view menu, here is the way you would do that and helpfully tells you that shortcut there. If I paste this in here, Notice that it is normal when you run these config commands for it to just exit without giving you any success message or anything like that. So what this means is that if I'm in a Git repo, so I'm gonna change into a repo I have here for Git testing. If I change into this repo and I say Git, let's say I'm gonna go ahead and add, I'm gonna stage some changes. We could do this, by the way, we could be, we don't have to do this from the terminal. We could be using this Git client, uh, the extension to be doing this over here. This is just a demo of the, the editor that may come up. If I now say git commit and I don't type in dash M and then message, I don't, I don't put a commit message in here. Git will open an editor for me to put in the message. Now, since I told it, hey, I want to use VS Code for this, notice that I got an editor here. This is my message. And it tells me to go ahead and, you know, how to, in a, how to use this. So how to handle line settings, things like that. So I can now save this and close this. And it used that for my message. If I hadn't run this command to say, hey, use VS Code for this, it would default to Vim as an editor. Now that's fine if you like Vim and you're used to it and you know like the syntax of commands to save and close, you have to hit like escape and then colon and then some other things. That's great. If you wanna use Vim, use Vim. If you're not used to Vim and you just like to use VS Code for it, I think this command is your friend. Similarly, these commands will say, if you hit a merge conflict that needs to be resolved, what tool should we use to resolve the merge conflict? So if you may run into merge conflicts outside of VS Code, for instance, Redgate, we have a tool called SQL Change Automation, where when you hit a merge conflict, if you've set, it will help and say, hey, how do you want to resolve this? You can set this as your global config for this is my preferred tool to manage this conflict and then it will help you automatically open VS Code when needed to resolve a conflict. Git settings inside VS Code. Now you don't necessarily have to go into these. You can open in Windows control comma opens the preferences here. There we go. I need to actually be uh, on the right, I need to have the focus set properly for my keyboard to work. You could also go file preferences settings to get here if you want. If we search for our get preferences here, you can see that there's actually quite a lot of preferences you can set here with get. One really useful one is auto fetch. 
Now, if you don't remember to come into your settings and tweak this, Git may prompt you in VS Code. VS Code may just ask you and be like, hey, do you want to enable auto fetch? Because it's really useful to see when someone else is making changes to your repo. I think it's really useful. You can also configure the auto fetch period if you want, and that'll help keep you updated on changes that are happening on the repo without having to manually tell it to fetch. There are also some extensions I think are really useful. The Git lens extension I think is fantastic. So I already have this installed here. Here's what the icon looks like. But if you're just installing this from extensions, you can type Git lens here and it will come up in the menu. Here is Git lens in the menu. If you look at the page here, you will see that I am not the first person to discover that this is a really useful extension. If you don't have it installed yet, there will be a little install button there for you to go ahead and put it in there. So I think this is a great extension. If it puts this, I like to keep mine right below the source control extension in VS Code. So here's Git Lens, here's the source control extension. You can actually drag these around if you wanna change the order. That took me a while to realize. But I like Git Lens because it'll help you see things like, let's say I wanna look at the history of this branch. I can view through different activities. I can compare things. It will also help with some more advanced functionality like rebase if you'd like to use it for those things. So really, really powerful. I also really like the Git Cheat Sheet extension. If you are just getting started with um, Git and you, I think it's really useful to learn some of the commands from the Git CLI. So if I type Git Cheat Sheet here and search Git Cheat Sheet, it's this one right here. Not nearly as many installations, but I think still useful. The way that you use this once it's in, once it is installed is you open up the command palette and then you search for open git cheat sheet. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I already have it installed. We'll do open git cheat sheet. And it has just a list of useful git commands with brief explanations of what they do, you can copy them to the clipboard. So this one, get branch, lists all branches. We'll copy that to the clipboard. We'll open our terminal. And just to try to make this a little more readable, I'll clear this out. I'll paste that command in and I can see the results. So really simple extension, but I think can be very powerful if you do want something that can just help you get started with working from this command line extension, I do find myself often using a combination of the get CLI inside the terminal in VS Code, along with the source control extension, as well as the get extension too. Now, if you check out here, you may notice, hey, look, I'm in this repo and I have this cool thing that tells me what is the branch name I'm in and Am I ahead? Am I behind? What's going on? This little thing here is because I have a tool called Poshkit installed. I like to install, I do install the PowerShell extension in VS Code itself. And then in PowerShell in general, I also install the Poshkit extension, which will provide not only that view on the CLI of what branch are you in, but also it has some really cool autocomplete functionality. So you can type git co and then tab, and it'll be like, oh, you mean commit, right? So it'll help save you some keystrokes as well. Here is where you can find out all about posh git and get an installed as well. Thanks for joining me to talk through my get setup with VS Code. I'm Kendra from Redgate. I'll see you in another video soon.